Hi everyone, welcome again to my YouTube channel. My name is Aisha Lagunju and I'm a Nigerian currently based here in Australia. If you're new to this channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I love, love having you around. And if you're returning, thank you so much for being a part of this YouTube family. On this channel, I share my life experiences as a Nigerian immigrant living here in Australia. I also share very helpful and informative content on moving, living and ultimately thriving here in Australia. Please bear in mind that I'm not a migration consultant, neither am I a registered agent. Also, I will be sharing some of my DIY projects that I do on the side and how I make money from these DIY projects. Occasionally, I will be sharing vlogs on interesting life events um, just to show you what it really looks like, you know, to live here in Australia through the eyes of a Nigerian such as myself. I'll also be answering some of your most burning questions because I noticed after my um, last interview with Legit.ng, a lot of people like came into my DM asking me how do I move to Australia, how do I migrate, you know, and so many questions around moving to Australia. Just letting you know, not a migration consultant, uh, but I'm just here to share um, my experiences. Um, so I want to encourage you, if you do have any questions, you can just leave it in the comment section down below. That way, if somebody has, you know, a similar question such as yourself, then they can get the answers as well without asking the question again. Um, so because I look into the questions and, you know, that forms part of the topics that I share here on uh, my channel. So based on popular demand, today I will be sharing how you can do your immigration process all by yourself without the help of an agent from start to finish. So look, if I can do it myself, you surely can do it by yourself. Um, except of course, if you have the money, um, you know, to pay an agent and you really don't have time to sit down with paperwork, by all means, go for it. Just make sure you're not paying like a scammer or somebody who's going to <laughs> run away with your money. Or make sure you are using a reliable agent, someone who's registered. Um, you know, they're called Mara, M-A-R-A, -A, Mara Registered Agent. So just make sure you do your due diligence before you give away your hard-earned money to someone. Otherwise, for the sake of this video, I will be talking about how you can do your immigration process all by yourself from start to finish. So let's get right into it. So, because this um, topic is non-exhaustive, I am going to be doing um, this video in parts. So it's going to be a series just because there's a lot of information and I don't want you getting information overload. Um, I also want to break it in the best possible way that, you know, anyone can understand and just to make your life really really easy so i'm going to be starting with the permanent residency visa so i plan to talk on the student uh, visa type i also plan to talk on the temporary um, work visa type and um, also the permanent residency visa type so that's those are the three major ones that i will be touching on but on this um the part one of this video i'll actually be focusing on the permanent residency type of visas and then subsequent one my subsequent video which will be the part two i'll talk about the um temporary work visa um which is the process is kind of similar to the permanent residency type to be honest the visas are just different but it's actually very similar you pretty much do the same thing the same thing from start to finish the third one is going to be the um student visa which you know subsequent weeks i will be covering that one in the part three of this video so it's going to be um three parts uh for the video and then i'll be publishing um that on my channel so today i'll be talking about different types of permanent residency type of visas. So permanent residency type of visas allow you to live in Australia permanently, um, which is what we came here, myself and my family came on. So from Nigeria, we started the process. It took us about seven months from start to finish and we got our permanent residency visa. And what that allows us to do is to come live here permanently. And after four years of being residents, you be, we become eligible to apply for our citizenship. 
So that's one of the things that um, the permanent residency visa allows you to do. So there are three ways that you can become a permanent resident in Australia. The first is um, through the family stream. The second is the work stream. And the third is the business or investor stream. Now the family stream will be visas like partner visas, child visas, parent visas, um, you know, relative and things like that. Um, the other one would be work, um, the, the other one on the work stream would be the skilled nominated visa and the independent um, skilled visa type, which is what I'll be focusing on. The third one is the business stream, which is business investors. That one is for people who have like a huge amount of money and are willing to come, you know, invest that money here in Australia. So I believe that my audience is mainly people who want to come in through work, either temporary work or permanent uh, residency type or coming through student type of visa. So yeah, for the permanent residency type of visa, there are two major ones, uh, two uh, main visas. The first one is called the 189, which is the skilled independent permanent residency type of visa. The second one is called 190, that is the skilled nominated um, residence, permanent residency type of visa. For the sake of this video, I'll be referring to 189 and 190 because it's less mouthful <laughs> and I'm not having to say skilled nominated I and mean, it's tongue twisting and all of that. So 189, 190, again, if you're getting confused or if you ever get lost, just remember that I will be linking, um, putting links down below for you to reference so you can read through all of the articles and the links that I'm going to be putting below so yeah you can get all of the information and more from the links so yeah 189 190 just always remember 189 is independent 190 is nominated but they're both permanent uh, residency type of visas so what do you need to do the first thing that you need to do is to identify your occupation on the list. So in Australia, there are occupations that are in demand, but currently, so what's happening at the moment is the borders are shut, uh, but there are 41 occupations on the priority migration list. Uh, what that means is if you're um, skilled in one of these 41 occupations, then you are able to move to Australia even though the borders are closed. So they're going to fast track your visa, you know, processing, and then you can quickly get your permanent residency visa and move to Australia. Again, I have linked um, the 40, 41, I'm sorry, occupations down below for you to see off the top of my head. I know there's some um, engineering, there's accountant, there's um chef even <laughs> there's um medical practitioners and you know yeah there's 41 occupations and if you have i mean if your occupation is on the list and you've got all your documents ready then i would say you know go for it um so yeah um other than that the borders are closed and the latest news um have reported that australia might be opening up in second quarter i'm sorry first quarter of 2022 so which is january february or march uh whatever the case is i don't know but yeah that's the latest news that we have right now so when you want to start i mean like i said before the first thing you want to do is to identify your occupation without that you're not moving um further on the next step so the first step is actually to identify your occupation. There's a list of occupation on the Australian government website. You also find this occupation list on the state's website as well. You'll also find it on immigration websites and um, you know many different websites. But I have listed again the links below for you. Uh, once you click on the link, try to identify your occupation. Just bear in mind that sometimes your occupation might not, the title of your occupation might not be the same on the list. So what you want to look out for is actually the duties. So maybe, for instance, you're a welfare worker 
in Nigeria and then maybe in, in Australia they're called health workers. So it's possible that the titles are different so don't be discouraged if you've gone through the list and it's not looking like something you normally do um, in Nigeria. You can also have a look on the duties and if it's similar or closely related to what you are doing in Nigeria then you're in luck. So yes, uh, once you're able to identify the occupation the next thing you want to do is to identify the assessment authority for this particular occupation. So unlike in Canada, I know that there's a West um, evaluation, which is regardless of the occupation that you are doing, that you are choosing, West does, you know, all of the evaluation for you. It's different with Australia just because there are different, many different assessment um, authorities for many different occupations. So if you're say like a health worker, um, I know that ACWA is the assessment authority. So I mean, there are, if you're like an engineer, there's Engineers Australia. So there are many different, um, you know, assessment bodies who assess your skills under the uh, permanent residency migration scheme. So essentially what they do is they review both your skills and your qualification to, to check to see if it is suitable for migration purposes. I always tell people like this is, I believe is the most important step of the migration process because if you get it wrong at this stage, then you're not going any further. So if you submit the your assessment and they come back to say it's negative so if they say oh look your qualification and your skill is not they're not suitable for migration purposes then that's the end of your journey except if you reapply or whatever and i mean all i'm saying is until you get a positive assessment then you're not moving any step further so yeah after you've identified your occupation Make sure you identify the assessment body and once you identify the assessment authority for your occupation, the next thing you want to do is to familiarize yourself with the website and all of the um, requirements they're asking for. For me, if I'm doing any type of application, truth is, if they ask me for A, B, C and Z, I normally give A, B, C and Z and sometimes even more, you know, so yeah. What you want to do is to make sure you familiarize yourself with what they're asking for and do your best to provide all of the things they're asking for. What that does for you is to make your um, application very seamless and quick as well. So I find that um, my skill assessment um, report actually did come back in less than four weeks, I think. That's because, I mean, I'm not saying it could be luck, it could be anything, whatever you want to credit that to, but I do believe that I put in a very clean, nice application. Everything that was asked for, I, you know, put it in a nice order, saved everything in, um, in PDF. It was such a neat application. And if I was the case officer, honestly, these applicants would have made my life really easy. So when you're doing your application, try to think like the case officer. You want to put together a nice clean application to make the life of your case officer really really easy. That way they'll also make your life easy because it's quicker for them to make a decision. They can see that you know applications all nice and clean. You get your result back in no time. It's time to start gathering all your documents. So, um, like I said before, it will be things like for your qualification skill, it's going to be um, your BSc, Master's, Advanced Diploma, whatever degree that it's been asked for, your transcript as well. And for the skill, it's going to be things like your offer letter, your reference uh, documents. So reference documents is like things um, where you list out all your duties and will be signed by your supervisor or your manager or whoever's going to be signing and contact details of maybe like your HR or your supervisor as well because sometimes they call to actually do verify some of the claims that you are making. So yeah, um, documents like your tax, if you do have them, um, your tax um, certificates, your um, pay slips. 
So just think of all the many things that, you know, um, you can put together to show that you did work in a place, you know, things like pay slips, um, reference forms, um, offer letters, promotion letters, if you were on um, probation, end of probationary period, things like your confirmation um, letters and all those many things, you start to put them together. One thing I must say is before you actually do start, you want to check the link below for an eligibility calculator. I've also put down uh, below a link to actually check how much you're going to be spending. So I know that the permanent residency visa alone, the visa fee alone is about $4,000. Um, so there's also a calculator that I've linked below. You can put in, if you're coming with say dependents, maybe you have a family, you have kids, you have a partner, whatever the case is, you put in your situation in this calculator, it tells you potentially how much you are going to be spending, but bear in mind, it only tells you how much you'll be spending for the visa fees loan, not the, um, cause you're going to pay medical fees as well. So if you're like a family of four, imagine just multiply that by four, or if you're just one person, just you know think of that as one person, you're going to pay medicals, you're going to pay for things like police reports, you're also going to pay for um, the skill assessment as well. I remember at the time when I paid, that was back in 2017, I paid about $314,000 for the assessment. And again, I believe that was um, owing to the fact that dollar was really high at that time. So it was one naira to 500 US dollars. I don't know what it is now in terms of conversion, but just for the visa fee alone, you are going to be paying 4,000 um, Australian dollars. So I think it's about 4,015 or 4,000, just 4,000 and a little bit on top of that, um, Australian dollars. So you want to check how much it will cost you before you start anything at all. Just to be sure that, you know, if you something that's within your budget, then you also want to check the eligibility points that kind of gives you an idea of where you are in terms of points again when I did my process in 2017 the minimum points that you could have to even be considered eligible were 60 points right now is 65 but realistically you should be aiming for about 85 to 95 even really know what the situation will be like once they open up the borders really because I feel like once they open up the border maybe things can go back to normal like what it used to be nobody can really say for sure for now uh, but yeah like the minimum is 65 points and um, yeah you want to check the eligibility calculator and that kind of helps you gives you an idea so in terms of the eligibility points, it's a point test, uh, point based test um, visa. It puts into consideration things like your age, your qualification, your language um, skill. Um, it also puts into consideration the number of years that you have um, acquired on that particular occupation that you are going for. So yeah, just check down the link below and see what you come come up with in terms of points and then also check how much um, you potentially be spending on your visa um, fees and things like that. So back to what I was saying is once you've um, gathered your document, it's time to now um, put together those documents and submit to the assessment authority. Thank you for watching my video. Please hit like, subscribe, and don't forget to turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my new videos every week. See you later. Bye-bye.